hate programming. I have a friend who started to build and sell apps in the App Store last year and he said that looking on my social network posts it looks easy, but he is not millionaire yet. And <laughs> how that happened and why? It kind of looks easy, you just have a Mac, build a few applications, publish them in the App Store and Apple will start to send money to you. Looking from high enough perspective it is so. And yes, it is simple, but I didn't say it is not hard. I even found a post where I'm saying that you will struggle for the first year or few, but I see that this post still looks a little bit too fancy. Enjoy the process and results will come. Sounds good, but how that was in real life, how I get to those 50K in up sales, yes, even before Apple Cat and taxes, but still in 50K in sales last year. Let me tell the overnight success story. This is my very first computer. No, that's not a keyboard, that is the Spectrum clone. Don't worry, I will not tell you a story how I went to the school, through the mountains and rivers, but this is part of the story. So, I write my first lines of the code on this machine in my teens, but I wasn't one of those guys who stick with programming from, I don't know, kindergarten. I play the games and then I become more interested in girls and beer. In my 20s I went to army. That's me. Very first year in the army. Okay, I was around computers all the time even. I had this computer in army and I, with my friend, hacked the system a little bit to install games, but again, nothing related to programming. <laughs> Fast forward to my 30s when I finally got in tech. When the very first iPhone was released that catched my attention, but I didn't feel that I could develop apps for that yet. A few years later, in my tech job, I was driving around the country, fixing and installing payment devices and listening Build and Analyze podcast. Back in the days, that was indie app developers podcast about everything about Apple. That was Marco Armand, and he was Instapaper app developer back at the time. Currently, he's developing popular podcast application Overcast. So I was daydreaming that that could be cool to become indie app developer and build apps for the iPhones and I already had iPhone back at time. I didn't dream only, I bought this book, I was programming the Big Nerd Range Guide, third and later fourth edition. Basically that is iOS development for iOS 4 and iOS 5 and I started learning Objective-C and UIKit. Back in the days there wasn't any iOS development jobs in Latvia so I didn't have a plan to apply for them and didn't care about that so I just kept learning iOS development and I learned everything from this book from the cover till the end and developed a few test projects and then I released my first application in the App Store. But that was a catch. It was all in skeuomorphism back in the days. Do you remember how podcast application was looking? For some reason it emulated magnetic tape player. Notes up had paper textures all around for, I don't know, no good reason. Even I released it up in the app store and built for more for my own needs. I didn't see how I can get from basic looking UI kit applications that I learned to develop from this book to fancy designs that other applications had back at that time. And yes, I had bachelor's degree back in a time already, but learning how to bubble sort data didn't really help with iOS development at all. And then I had chance to switch to the product management role and become busy with that. And I dropped my idea about indie app development. And I decided that that is not for me. I don't have enough skills for that. My indie developer's career filed for the first time. I still watched WWDC videos and still had my Apple developers account active, but basically my dream kind of fell apart. Check out this guy. Do you recognize him? So yeah, yeah, that's me. That's me as a head of products from company Headshot. My career in product management was interesting and I learned a lot. And I really enjoyed that. But when iOS 7 and Swift were released, I again started to play around with development tools. And I still had that urge to build something. All that I learned before in this book was already unrelevant. And I basically had to relearn iOS development because Objective-C versus Swift and UIKit was updated. So 
I relearned the iOS development using Swift and updated UI kit versions. I built a few applications in the App Store, released them, and guess what happened? Nothing. I earned nothing. Zero. And uh, yeah, I just realized that there is no there is no point of doing that. I hate programming. I'm just not smart enough for that. So I understood that I was just uh, delusional. I basically failed again for second time already. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that could be so much easier on my free time just to chill out, play video games, read books, I don't know, take endless naps or go out with friends to have a beer. But I didn't want to stuck in corporate job forever. I needed a new strategy. So I decided to become paid to learn development. I changed two things. I started to hunt jobs on Freelancer and Upwork to start earning some money from my development because indie apps didn't work out at least yet. And instead of jumping on and off with learning, I stuck to the simple routine. Basically, I, I woke up every morning a little bit earlier than I needed for my day job and spent morning on learning or working on freelance projects. Beginning on the amp work was tough. That is not easy to hunt jobs here, but in less than a year, I already was fully booked with work on amp work and with direct projects. And I started to questioning already myself why I'm spending 10 plus hours in week driving to the office uh, if I could spend those hours on working on my own apps or freelancing and basically get paid for them. <laughs> so in 2017, I dropped my full-time job. At the time, I was head of products and I was doing well at my day job. And it wasn't really clear for my co-workers why I did that. They expected that I'm just moving companies to raise salary or something. The first few years after quitting my corporate career, I was busy freelancing to become a better developer. I was working on many small projects and a few quite big ones as well. So now I have decent iOS development skills and that should make easy to earn money in the App Store, right? What do you think? <laughs> I launched a few more apps and started to earn some money. I could afford some pizza and beer and definitely some coffee in coffee shop, but nothing more. Yeah, and here is another tweet now with revenue chart on it. And yeah, you can see that it's kind of growing. In 2020, I already was able to do car payment from my indie app development. But yeah, I had to figure out first how to manage time, basically freelancing, working on my own applications, creating content, uh, still spending time with family. That was tricky. How to build MVP, how to launch product in the App Store, how to grow the audience and monetize the application and much, much more. After that, I finally started to earn real money in the App Store. So sure, my posts on Twitter and the newsletter updates already was looking much better and interesting. In 2021, I reached 1K in monthly revenue. 2022 already pushed that up to 3K and closing 2023, yeah, 50K in sales. Yeah, before Apple Cat, before taxes, before everything, but still 50K, crazy. That uh, sales numbers were they doubled every year. But the harsh truth is that uh, I was getting ready for the last three year sprint since 2012, when I was driving around and listening, build and analyze and developing perspective podcasts in my first tech job. Also working in product management wasn't a waste of time. That is part of indie developer's job as well. So I'm not the brightest mind in the internet and I'm just average in many different skills, design, programming, copywriting, content creation, and I somehow do the best that I can <laughs> with that. And that leads to some success. And yeah, everyone's story and situation is different, but I assume that most of the success stories has quite a few pilot projects in the past behind the scenes. Programming itself is not uh, easy 
You have to solve hard problems every day and keep learning new tools and frameworks. One week you feel like a god, genius, solving one problem after another. Next week you feel like imposter and do not understand how computers work. You're just fighting with bugs with no hope of solving them. Building indie apps is even harder and you can get on not nice emotional roller coaster. If this is your first year in indie app development, I would suggest to keep your expectations low and yeah, you're just getting ready for the game. And if you are on similar path and have challenges or questions, drop them in the comments below the like and subscribe buttons. <laughs> I'm trying to answer to everyone and currently I'm working on my indie solopreneur course update. So that will be helpful to hear how I could help you. Maybe I should include something what I do not see in this course update. Okay, thank you for watching. See you on next one. Keep shipping. Bye.